Hello everybody, it's Sandy, your engineer, MBA, and investor. In today's video, I want to talk about this article on IGI talking about how can we make genomic medicine more affordable. I want to talk about all of that in this video. I thought it was an interesting topic to talk about because as much as we love talking about the technology, about these companies involved, the key, key, key metric is will genomics medicine Will genomics medicine reduce in cost, right? Because if you make reduce them in cost, you make them more affordable to citizens and ultimately you get them in the hands of the average person. But before we do that, before we jump into this video, you guys know that you really like this video, smash that like button, destroy that like button. It's quick, it's free, it's easy. If you're not subscribed yet, consider subscribing. Okay, so uh, sorry for not making a video in the last few days. I mean, I made one video, I think on Wednesday night, sort of had a couple of days off here like i said i've been on the road uh, but you can expect more videos here i do i do want to mention that i'll be extremely busy as well in the next two weeks as well so these three weeks were um were going to be the hardest for me uh so far this year because i'm literally on the road on the third week i'm going to portugal this upcoming week i'm going to texas uh, but i'll have my laptop i'll have my webcam i'll have my microphone so We'll make the most out of it you know we we, we we can we can adapt right so this article was posted uh late april um by henderson we've covered her articles in the past in fact the last article i covered from her was me criticizing her for not mentioning caribou biosciences anywhere near her 2022 update for crispr the landscape so new igi is developing strategies to ensure genomics therapies like like CRISPR are accessible patients who need them. A wave of approval for new genomics ter therapies for genetic diseases appro approaching conditions that are previously had no treatment options, like spinal muscle atrophy, one, a disease that paralyzes children and leads to death in toddler years, now have a promising gene therapy. The catch, the price tag for genomic medicine currently ranges about 500k to 2 million per patient. These are prices that many public health systems cannot pay. Many private insurers are unwilling to cover, putting life-changing and life-saving medication out of reach for most people. And actually, this is a great, great segue into explaining that topic, right? I mean, what's the point of having all these technologies, having these beautiful companies produce these beautiful results for patients if those patients won't be ever able to afford it, right? So there has to be that conversation, right? We have to have that conversation. How can we make it more affordable? And then uh, the author here talks about Melinda Klingman, so IGA Public Impact Director, talking a couple of quotes here. But for them, the, the solution here is to tackle this problem. They're sort of uh, talking about the task force led by Kligman, of course. The task force is bringing together experts in academia, industry, government, IP, and more in a twofold aim to cr one, creating a plan to deliver IGI developed CRISPR therapies in a more affordable way, and two, publishing a roadmap and details, bottlenecks, and possible solutions who sh share the IGI goal. Right? So, Looks like they have a couple of doors and uh, goals here. So this is how it looks like. I just suggested something, something like that. It's really interesting that, you know, for them to tackle this, what they're thinking is to have four subgroups, right? Organization funding models, group one, group two, IP, uh, IP and licensing, group three, drug manufacturing, group four, pricing and access, right? So you have different organization attached to different groups, right? The task force is designed to tackle ma major areas that contribute to the pricing of genomic therapies with subgroups that include subject matter experts. Interesting. Oh, you, you actually have a Jennifer Dabna's quote here. We're excited to bring what we're excited about what CRISPR can do, and UC Consortium sickle cell trial will begin enrolling patients volunteers this year. But a cure is not really a cure if people cannot that need it cannot afford it. It's crucial we take in this tough issue now so we can get this medicine to the people who, are, who need them around the world. So I actually have a different perspective here. I mean, I understand here Henderson here is sort of promoting IGI here because she, you know she's obviously writing for this company and obviously she she's promoting some sort of action plan that will enable that type of uh, end goal. Right, the end goal is to reduce costs for drugs. Right, for specifically for CRISPR. Uh, related drug, right? When they do get FDA approved, if they do get FDA approved, of course. Really quick, 
the com story becomes really complex. All 356 approved by drugs approved by the FDA between 2010 and 2019 were at least part funded by $230 billion public money fund. In fact, only 36% of clinical trials are sponsored solely by industry groups. And these are often late stage trials that expand on early stage trials funded by academic and government groups. So I guess the, the big, big takeaway here is we got to make medicines more affordable, right? It's not just genomics, actually. But of course, if we're talking about CRISPR, we got to make them more affordable. My personal look at this is we're looking at Cures 2.0 Bill Act. I think that's going to be big for U.S. And of course, that's going to spill over the world. Uh, you're going to reduce delays, reduce costs just by passing a bill. Of course, there's a lot more to that. I'm, I'm simplifying here. But the point is that government intervention, intervention sort of like that will definitely help. But then you have the other side of the token, right? I mean, if you start introducing all these these layers, you know, you know, I, I'm a, you know, I, I don't know about you guys, you know, I think all of us have different different outlooks here. But I'm a huge, huge, uh, I'm a huge uh, anti, you know, bureaucracy, right? Anti red tape. I hate that. I think when you have more hands on on a topic, usually, you know, you want several hands on a certain subject because. Uh, you're going to get more approvals, uh, more accuracy in the approval, you're going to more efficiencies. And of course, it's always good to have a diversity of thoughts and decision making in the table room. But the problem is when you have so many people, so many layers, so many organizations, so many groups, what happens is you end up creating unintended consequences that actually end up extending delays, extending costs, right? And I don't have to tell you guys, you know, for those who live in cities or wherever you live, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. The more complexity you have, the more delays you have, the call, you get these taxes that come up, you get more expensive things. I mean, things spill over. I mean, the intentions was right, right? You're introducing sort of a layer there to sort of regulate that. But in the other sense, you know, you're sort of creating unintended consequences. So it's something to think about, right? But I truly agree, we need to make it more affordable. There has to be, in, in, this has to be addressed, right? Period, right? I mean, there's several things that have to be addressed in this space, but pricing for patients have to be addressed, right? Whether that is funded by the government, whether that is funded by insurance, whether that is funded by companies, it has to be addressed, right? And right now, it's definitely not addressed. You know, $2 million per patient it is not sustainable. You're not going to get anywhere. Trust me, you will not get anywhere. I mean, this is going to be some sort of cool science project that, you know, only the rich kids can have access to. And honestly, even the rich kids, you know, Guys, $2 million is no joke. Like, that's a lot of money. But obviously, to save your child, save your person, your family, or uh, obviously any price will do. But I don't know, just food for time, just sort of ranting here. But beautiful article here. Yeah, I love that idea. I just thought about making this video here while I'm in Montreal. So hopefully you guys appreciate this video. If you did, don't forget to like this video. Smash the like button. Subscribe if you're not. And let me know how can we make medicine more affordable in this world, right? Specifically with CRISPR, specifically with genomics. Let me know. Thank you so much for watching and have a beautiful Sunday. Thank you.